I had to go into temporary accommodation, which lasted seven months. My daughter come and picked me up on Christmas Day, and I, so, I stood outside sobbing because I just didn't want her to see the place that I, I had been because of this man taking all my money. I, I felt so ashamed. I had to lie, and I hate lying to them. At the end of the day, when I'm here and I close my front door, it's just me and him inside my head, and I can't cope with that. What's up, Seekers, and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Anne who fell in love with a man on Facebook Messenger. The two formed a relationship and were even engaged. Anne is having serious doubts about her fiance Michael being who he claims to be. She has borrowed money from her close friends and family and has sent Michael over $50,000 to get him out of the terrible situation he claims to be in. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hi, Social Catfish. My name is Anne Whitehall. I'm 63 years of age. All my other children are all grown up now. And my youngest, she left home to go and live with a boyfriend. So there was just me and the dog. And there's only much you can tell the dog. I was doing 11 hour shifts in the kitchen as a, a head chef. It was like being on a hamster wheel. You got up at six, you went to work at seven and you came home at half past seven of the night. And just coming into an empty dark house, it's just a horrible, lonely place to be in. I didn't even eat. I didn't even go in my living room for about three months because I was just so tired and fed up. And then I came home one night and my Instagram, this person popped up. It just seemed to come at a right time of my life. This message started everything. After going through two divorces and now living on her own, the thought of having someone to talk to was a breath of fresh air for Anne. Michael would text her all day, before, during, and after work. Good morning and good night text. He was always there to talk. He was quite, it's a lonely life out here. I wondered if you would message me. I was quite off at the time because that's what us English people are like, I suppose. I just said, if I have time, I'm a very busy lady which is true. I think it was on one of my days off that we really got into conversation. And he, he said, uh, oh, you sound like my ideal woman. He used to send me like these um, YouTube songs every morning, all those nice songs and all these nice emojis. And I just thought, oh, this seems to be, you know, okay. He, um, he was a very good looking chap, really was. He was very handsome. He really was very handsome, I must admit. Towards the third month, it had got to, um, oh, I love you, I want to marry you. You cook, you're caring, you're loving. You're beautiful inside and out. All the things a woman wants to hear. It was around four months after he asked me, would I marry him? He'd even said he would like to propose in a romantic setting. And he even asked me what sort of ring I would like. And I said, oh, just a plain gold band. He said, don't you like diamonds? I said, yeah. I said, but they're not practical if you're working. He said, oh, you won't be working. So he said, I just love you so much. I, because I was getting to know him because of the chit chat we were having every day. I was getting to like him and started to love him. Very much so. I, I did, I did really fall in love with him. 
but I'd never met him. And that's the hard part. And we were even talking about when he came to Manchester Airport, how would we feel, you know? And I just said, well, I would feel as if there's nobody else about. I would just meet you and just love you and kiss you as if there was not a soul about in the airport. That's how I felt about him. I, I was sharing my life with him. I told him everything. I bared my soul, as the people say to him. Although all of Michael and Anne's communication was through chats, Anne had fallen in love with this man. She was engagement ring shopping and preparing to meet him in person. But then things unfortunately took a turn. It started the day of my birthday in October, so it was like four, five months after. He messaged me in work and he said, can you, can you chat? And I said, well, I'm going on my break in a minute. What, what's the matter? He said, well, you need to sit down. I need to ask you a huge favour. Because I'm self-employed, I have to bring all the machinery and there's one machine that I need and it's broken. And I just said to him, I don't have that type of money. And I, I was made to feel so guilty that the following Monday, I said, oh, well, I can't do anything until Monday. I said, where do I send it to? He hadn't even said, well, oh, happy birthday or anything like that. And I thought he was more interested in getting this money. And then, no, it wasn't, oh, thanks very much, but when can you send the next bit? And that's where it started, borrowing money from other people. And I hate myself for it. I really and truly hate myself for it. My landlord was coming round um, and Christmas was coming. Um, I didn't end up buying my grandchildren anything and that really really hurt me it did the five thousand had been paid and I said right that's it now no more this person messaged me uh, a Christian O'Neill and said he was the banking consultant and that the bank wouldn't release the codes because he still owed an old tax debt so I ended up cashing in my workplace pension, sent that, and then there was um, money for Amazon cards. At this point, Anne had sent so much money to Michael for the broken machines and clearing all of his debts, she ended up sending over $50,000. She sent transaction after transaction after transaction. Michael's stories and bad luck never came to an end. He took everything from Anne, and when she ran out of money, she borrowed it from her friends. And I had every steam card out, and I could have decorated my bed, uh, bathroom with them. It was getting bad. It was getting bad. I'd lost my job. My car had gone. And then the 4th of November, um... Um, I had, I was evicted from my property, but before I was, went, I took a big overdose and it wasn't f for the fact that my, one of my daughters came and I couldn't, I, she came through the front door and, um, I was rushed to hospital where I was there for three weeks. I said, my grandchildren were going to grow up without their nanny. I said, how do you think, how do you think they would feel? And this is what hurt me the most. He said, oh, they'd get over it. And I just thought, you horrible, horrible person. I had to go into temporary accommodation, which lasted seven months, where there was drug addicts, um, alcoholics, and... I was petrified the whole time I was in there and I just thought, what the hell have I done? What the hell have you done to me? You have, it, it, it broken me in two. I can't sleep overnight because it's 
playing over in my mind over and over and over again. And I just want absolute closure on it. At the end of the day, when I'm here and I close my front door, it's just me and him inside my head. And I can't cope with that. Okay, Seekers, we had our work cut out for us. We knew we had to get rid of any thought and had about this man being who he really claims to be. We couldn't believe the amount of stress that Anne had been put through after reading her and Michael's text messages. While she was in the hospital after overdosing, Michael's best friend reached out to her for more money. And to top it off, she was hiding all of this from her family. Our social catfish team got straight to work. We looked through all the documents and the banking website. Before we go further, here's a quick message from our sponsor. We were able to verify and crack this case using all the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com. You can stop these scammers in their tracks and also support our team by picking up a subscription for yourself. This will help us build out more tools and hopefully one day stop romance scammers altogether. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. It was now time to sit down with Anne and let her know what we had found. Before we jump into it, we want to know, have you reconnected with your family and shared your experience? Well, one of my daughters knows everything. And my youngest daughter, um, who, was he who stayed here last night, we have reconnected. But my other two, that's a different story. That's going to take time. We sent you over a tracker to track down this man. And you sent it to him off of our FU gift card site. And he clicked on it. And he is in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. I had a feeling he would be. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't know how they live with themselves. I really and truly don't. But the, they've just got no empathy whatsoever. Something else I wanted to touch on was the credit union. We looked into this website and what we had found was this website had a bunch of problems. Um, from misspelling to bad reviews, just a mix of just a mess, should we say. Brienne was right. This website was completely fake. We Googled the address listed on the bank's website and it was not a valid address. Now it was time to run the phone numbers, also listed on the website. We used phone verification software to verify phone numbers along with a fraud score system from zero, unlikely fraud, to 100, high risk and likely fraud. We researched the phone number through this system and found that this particular number scored a 90, which means this is a high risk number and is most likely being used for fraud. The last thing we did was check the who is history on the site. We were able to find that this website was created on April 5th, 2022. What this means is this new bank was created this year and does not reflect the same information on the website. Remember this guy Christian who claimed he worked for the bank? He was also a fraud. His name and photo was stolen. This is a common tactic used by scammers. We've seen this in a lot of our previous episodes and logged into the bank account that looks something like this. The scammer pretends to have tons of money and tells the victim that he will pay her back, not knowing that the website was only created to make them feel comfortable with lending the scammer money. So Anne, think of it in a sense that the role that you're playing in this situation, you don't know these people, but you're moving the money for Michael. That's the upsetting part of it, because it's money that, you know, I've worked hard for. Um, I try not to think about it, but sometimes it'll flash in my mind. And I think, I just wish I hadn't woke up on that 4th of November, because he wrecked, wrecked my life. You know, something else I'd like to also add and um, share with you is, uh, Michael's true identity and hopefully that will help provide closure as well in this case. Um, so we use some reverse image search tools as well as in-depth reverse data image search tools 
and what we were able to find was Michael's true identity. And so the real person in the image is known as um, Remco. The man in the photos is completely innocent. His likeness was stolen to dupe Anne out of money. The profile on the right side is the Instagram that Anne was in contact with claiming his name was Michael. The profile on the left is the real man's profile. He has his own life and we were able to find his Twitter page and his Facebook. Uh, I still feel a bit stupid for doing it, but you know, you, you learn your lesson. And having my daughter back, my youngest one back, means more to me than anything. You know, she's worth more than all the money that I sent. You know, um, my children are. So time will tell and the others will come back as well. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'll read through the information that you send me um, and it'll be closure for my daughter, my eldest daughter, because she has been my rock through all of this. She really and truly has. Um, without her, I just couldn't have done it. And watching your channel has really given me hope and strength. And I can't thank you all enough for your help. Um, I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And it's nice to talk to you. I won't let him beat me whatsoever. You know, I, I wasn't going to give up on this. I wanted to do it um, for myself and for other people as well. Just don't get involved. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish, everyone. Remember, new videos go out every Wednesday. If you or anyone else you know might be going through a scam, please send an email to sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. See you guys next week.